hello everyone thank you for watching my videos and sharing your comments these are really motivating me to make more content i know that i upload videos after a very long time but i am trying to make more content regularly in this video we will discuss about prp number 10 which is on cross contamination i will explain how to implement on site and on documents there will be multiple templates in this video that you can copy as it is and can use in your company or you if you are a consultant you can use them giving your clients i have no issue with that in the start i added some basic slides just to make a tempo for session we are discussing in this video series about prp that is part of fsc 22000 this is the definition according to the standard and i mentioned here for just for your reference so you can again check it let's jump to the main topic that is prp number 10 measures for prevention of cross contamination prp 10 consists of four sub clauses and we will discuss them one by one clause 10.1 is general requirements and in all prp the first sub clause is always general requirements which is summary of other sub clauses if you comply with other requirements, you will automatically comply with general requirements. However, I highlighted here two words specifically just for your attention as it is as it is important here from audit perspective. First word is program and the second is measures. Here program indicated that this PRP should be part of procedure and also part of the FSMS manual. FSMS stands for Food Safety Management System and I will make a separate series for FSMS to describe everything in detail. However, here we are particularly going to focus on PRPs. Second word that I highlighted is Myers. Wherever you see the word Myers, please keep in your mind that you need, if you see the word Myers, that means you need a document to comply with this clause. So you need to do monitoring and verification. I will share the relevant formats and template that are needed to comply with this clause. The clause 10.2 second sub clause of this PRP is microbiological cross contamination. This clause includes requirements that need to implement in order to avoid cross contamination from one area of the facility to the other. Here again I highlighted two words one is zoning and the second is hazard assessment. So what is zoning? The word zoning is actually derived from zone which means specific area. For example, raw material area, then we have finished product area, then we have processing area, mixing area and according to the risk you need to divide them into different zone. For this zoning plan what you need, you need a facility map. For the zoning plan, for the zoning of your facility you need the, your facility map and if you never saw it before or you don't know where to find it or you don't need to make it even just check with your maintenance department and sometime it is also available with security and safety department so have one copy with of the map now second word is hazard assessment here you need to recap hazard study actually which has a study where we did the risk assessment if you don't know how to do the risk assessment or to make a HACCP study then please go back to my channel and watch the video on HACCP studies I also shared a link in my description for these videos okay let's start with the risk assessment this is the risk assessment that we did together in HACCP series here I just picked the screenshot of the final risk assessment and as you can see in the hazard column i added word cross contamination in physical biological and allergen column so that means in these three areas you need to consider cross contamination according to this clause to qualify or comply with this requirement of assess, uh, risk assessment and if there are chances of chemical cross contamination in your facility or the product you can consider cross contamination Second part of this clause is about zoning. Uh, you must define different areas of food facility into three zones. High risk area, medium risk area and low risk area. I considered here three zones to explain better but there is possibility to divide more than three zones depending on the type of product and processing. You need a document where you mention about different areas and what are the control measures. This plan should be part of the F FSMS manual. In according to ensure defined zoning is implemented on site, you need to consider below points. 
so the first point is there must be physical separation between high medium and low risk areas and that should be defining in your procedure and on your map as well second is indicate the areas with labeling or you can use color coding system as well which is more easily identifiable by the employees to follow and there will be no chances of non-compliance third is define ppes for different zones as per documented risk zone like for example in the low risk area if the product is fully packed then maybe you don't need to wear face mask while in processing area you must wear the mask therefore you need to define this in your document and paste at the entrance of the different areas that please wear this also do not forget what you mentioned on the label should be available on site if you mentioned that must wear mask then at the entry point mask should be available if it is not available it can be observation by the auditor this is the picture that i just mentioned for your reference that you can use such kind of logos in your facility to indicate which pp is followed in which area now the last point is define process flow for movements of people like from which area to which area people will move and cannot go back like usually this is the process starting from the raw material area raw material area and ending in the finished product area but anyway you have to define it i will explain it in the later stage and please whichever technique you are following it should be mentioned in your procedure and the manual because auditor is going to verify the document and on-site practice is same this is a picture to understand the physical separation more clearly here all areas are physically separated with walls and there are doors to enter from one area to other area and there are also chances that facility was constructed a long time ago and now it is not possible to make walls due to small size or any technical reason in such cases you cannot avoid this clause otherwise it will be a non-complies you need to install engineering structure walls to separate like some kind of temporary walls you can use to separate the areas physically and second option can be used plastic curtains and air curtains for example if there is so much people movement due to the nature of work that door cannot be closed all the time then in that case use plastic curtains and air curtains on such points to avoid cross contamination that this will be a must another point in the picture that you can notice are the dotted lines and these indicates process flow or movement of materials and people therefore you can draw same sort of lines on the arrows or the arrows to indicate movement flow and highlight this on your zoning plan now this is the zoning plan to explain how to indicate different a zones on your map here green area is low risk area red is high risk area and light brown to orange is medium risk area you can use yellow or any other color as well just you need to document it in your procedure like in your facility red is high risk and you can see different arrows on the map these arrows on the map are indicating the movement or flow of work and i believe you now know how to make a zoning plan on site and document it on the paper and if there is still some question you can comment and ask we are now going to start sub clause 10.3 which is allergen management this is most focused clause and most of the time non complies identify in this section let's discuss it and identify why and how you can avoid before discussing the implementation i think for allergen man management you must be aware about the allergens this is for your reference and use there are more or less 14 allergens that should be managed in proper way to avoid cross contamination and if during site visit auditor found something from this list is mixed up or not highlighted separately then this will be a non-conformance or a, an observation so how to manage allergen there are separate points according to this clause that you need to follow to comply with this clause the first point that you need to follow is make sure that allergens are defined for each and every product for this you can add one more row in your product specification like i highlighted here you can use this you can use this format describe here if allergen present or not like say yes or no if present then mention name of the allergen and there are different ways to document allergen in the product first is if allergen is an ingredient that you then you need to mention contain peanut wheat and if it is not direct ingredient of the product but there are chances then mention may contain and highlight the name of the product so full statement will be like may contain wheat third point is if you are handling allergen in the facility where this product processed 
in that case you need to indicate on the label that for example allergen are handled in the facility where this product is processed in this way you need to highlight in your specification about the allergens that are present or may present in your product second part to ensure allergen management is to mention on the label once you document in your specification same statement you can use to indicate allergens on the label i think that will be more easier this picture is for your reference as you can see here they mention about contain then may contain sometimes you see separate statement on allergen and other way is to bold the ingredient in ingredient list and it is also legally compliant and fulfilling the requirement of this clause like you can mention separately about the allergens or in the ingredient list you can bold the ingredient and both ways are legally compliant and also acceptable now next part of the allergen management is to indicate specific areas in your facility as allergen and put only allergen in that areas other way to manage allergen in the facility to use color codes on the pallets or racks or sometimes on bulk batches like on the bags you can highlight green or red something so everyone know that this is allergen and and why we are doing it in the facility so everyone all employees should know that this is the allergen and need to handle separately this picture indicating allergen labeling of racks in raw material section and this picture is showing color coding indication of allergens in finished product section both practices are acceptable you must document which practice you are following and same should be followed on site handling of allergen in the processing area is, is slightly different also more risky um, as product is open here and more chances of cross contamination for this you can follow one of two options first is to dedicate separate production line for allergen and non allergen that is no doubt very difficult and also involves high cost and also manpower and the second option is if first not possible then cleaning of complete line upon changeover when switching from allergen to non allergen or from one type of allergen to other type of allergen for example if you are you were processing peanut and now you need to pack the walnut so you need to clean the line so whenever you switch from allergen to non allergen or from one type of allergen to other type of allergen complete line cleaning is required and how you will do it you need to document in the procedure and you will follow the same on site now very important point is training of employee of all employee who are handling allergen is a must to comply with this clause so you must have attendance record and approved training material to complete comply with this requirement now we are moving to the last clause of this last sub clause of this prp which is physical contamination Let's first discuss examples of potential source of physical contamination that you need to consider so the first is wooden pallets glass plastic and brittle material rubber seals and personal protective clothes and equipments these all are potential source of physical contamination let's discuss how you can avoid physical contamination in your product here i highlighted specifically two words which usually forgotten during implementation like you did everything on site but you forget to document that one is periodic inspection and other is breakage record and to comply with these two requirements you need to have a list of material that is potential cause of physical contamination and some examples i highlighted in previous slide first task is to make a list of glass plastic and brittle material second define the inspection frequency and this will be depend on the risk level in your facility usually inspection frequency that i observed is monthly or quarterly and you need to mention this frequency on your procedure and need to follow the same numbered on such type of material on site that you have mentioned in your list where possible numbered means like you need to mention for example in processing area this is light number 1 this is light number 2 so use the stickers or something and highlight them now there is a format to make a list and for inspection i added one column you can use same list for both purpose now you can see first column is serial number second column is type of material or you can also name it as object third column is number given to that object like on site i mentioned before fourth column is area like processing or raw material and last column is inspection column so once you do the inspection as per defined frequency and you find out that there is some breakage of light or cover then in that case you must have a breakage report included a breakage report format in this video so you can use the same and you can see there are some instruction in the below section of this page these are not mandatory to mention here you can just document in the sop and it is fine 
so every time you observe some non conformance or not okay status fill in this format and do the uh, needful second physical contamination can be metal so if there is a risk of metal contamination in the product then, then metal detector must be installed to check and separate such products and you must have records in case of like you found non compliance some industries also use x rays machine to inspect physical contamination like stones hair etc and monitoring must be av available now the last point that specifically mentioned here that use shutter proof lights and use light covers to avoid cross contamination of glass into the products if you following all the point that i described in the video then your product is safe i will come again soon with the next prp keep watching and share with your friends and colleagues thank you